Hello everyone. Welcome to session 11 of LTEC 623. This week, I want to begin by thanking you for submitting Critical Reflection 10. It was really enjoyable to hear about your storyboarding process for Video Production 2. We have a ton of different topics that you're going to be tackling with your talking head videos. Everything from history of Okinawa to the history of the Waikiki Aquarium to topics such as how to avoid writer's block, introducing the Addy model, and other really interesting and exciting topics. So I can't wait to see these come to fruition. One of the parts of the assignment was to talk about what's exciting you and what's concerning you about producing a talking head video. In terms of what's exciting you, some of the points that people made were recognizing that you're feeling better at storyboarding. Another point that was made was that with the talking head video, you feel like you have a little bit more focus on pedagogical planning in terms of how you want to deliver the information this time around than the less familiar chalk and talk style that we did last time. Also, some of you were excited about the possibility of practicing personalization and really trying to make your video as engaging as possible for your target audience. Some of you were excited to try new things related to lighting. And then also you were excited that you had a better understanding of the larger production process that we're going through. And that clarity is setting you at ease slightly in terms of taking on this next production. Now, in terms of concerns, there are things that you might imagine would concern folks thinking about a talking head video. One of them is simply managing the speaking rate. Uh, how fast should you speak? And can you do that consistently? Another issue was maintaining consistency across shots. People mentioned clothes, makeup, body placement, shot type, things like that. How do you make that consistent from shoot to shoot to shoot? Other folks were concerned about capturing quality audio, being proficient with editing in Wii Video, and then also anticipating the amount of editing that's going to come as a result of this project. One person mentioned challenges related to talking to the camera and maintaining eye contact. And then also there were concerns about knowing where to record. Where can you find a good background and where can you find a peaceful place where it's quiet and you'll get good audio. So all reasonable concerns. And just know, of course, that we all share these concerns when it comes to being on camera and shooting a talking head video. Now, with that, I want to transition to talk a little bit about media delivery problems as introduced to us by Lang and Costly. Now, this particular article was titled Improving Online Video Lectures. And in that article, of course, they talked about from the literature five general media delivery problems. And the first one, of course, was pacing and this idea of the rate of speed at which information is presented. And we know from cognitive research that if visual media is delivered too quickly, student comprehension levels suffer. Keywords related to pace include speed, fast, slow, quick, quickly, rate, and time. Those are all, those are all words related to pace. The second problem has to do with intelligibility. And that's the ability of the learner to be able to accurately see or hear content delivered by media in order to make sense of the information. Keywords related to this has to do with size, big, bigger, small, smaller, low, high, distorted. And ideally, of course, with any type of instructional media, you don't want learners to have to strain in order to be able to see or hear what's being shared. So intelligibility, super important. The next media delivery problem is quality. And this is different than intelligibility in it. And this is really comes down to how the learner sees the presentation or design of the video. And this, of course, has to do with aesthetics and production value and overall design. Keywords related to quality include good, bad, poor, new, old, outdated, clear, unclear, things like that. 
The fourth delivery problem has to do with media diversity. And this is the idea that we want to use a variety of types of media to deliver information to learners throughout the lesson. We don't want to use just audio or just video. We'd, we should be using both. And we don't want to use just verbal information, but we also want to include nonverbal representations as well. And so learners are looking for that media diversity to keep things interesting and engaging and to leverage the dual processing of the human brain. This idea that we can take information in through our eyes and in through our ears. And the fifth media delivery problem has to do with congruence. And this is the idea that all of the pieces of information that are being presented are connected in some meaningful way. It can't be haphazardly put together or that's going to strain the learner's ability to make sense of that information. So there you have it, five general media delivery problems that are very much related to video lectures and talking head videos. Now, of course, I'd like you to think a little bit about how these media delivery problems, they don't necessarily have to be problems, but they're really dimensions in and of themselves connect to the Venn diagram that we've been developing and leaning on this semester. Now, interestingly, the Lang and Costly research actually involved real students commenting on video lectures. And the researchers actually identify 211 different complaints that learners submitted. What's interesting is they analyzed, well, what things do these learners complain about? So in other words, what do learners notice in terms of these general types of media delivery problems? And it turns out that it's actually quality is the problem that they most complained about. So 34% of that those 211 complaints were related to quality. The next category was intelligibility, which is pretty shocking. But as we all know, technically, it's hard to capture audio and video that's of high enough quality that it is intelligible. And that's not something that happens by accident. The third most popular complaint was related to pace, which is very interesting because that's something we can easily control in the delivery of our instruction. And then in fourth place was media diversity and then finally congruence. Now with that, what I want to do is apply these five areas of media delivery to the analysis of a talking head video. So this is a 2017 video and it's called Slack Tutorial, How to Use Slack Like a Pro in Less Than Five Minutes. So I'm just gonna play a 30 second snippet of this video. Let's go ahead and watch that. What's up everyone? I'm gonna show you how to use Slack like a pro in less than five minutes because I gotta get going in five minutes. So I'm gonna just show you the first tip right off the bat. Type in message and then put someone's at name. So let's just say Chad and you could say anything and you could write this from any box. Boom, what up dog? And you could actually say that from any single person. It saves you a bunch of time. I'm gonna show you a bunch of other keyboard things in the bottom left, you can actually see what I'm typing. If you're able to save one hour a day from this, think about all the free time they're gonna have at the end of the year. You can go to Mexico and send me back some tacos. Uh, so here's, let's get going. So let's see, Jamie just sent me a Okay, so let's analyze that from the perspective of a talking head video. Well, right off the bat, the host, Kagan, sets the tone and speed of this talking head video. It begins with a cold start, and he says that this is only going to be five minutes because he's got to get going in five minutes. So he's setting up this kind of sense of humor. The pacing is getting started. It's going to be very quick. He's managing expectations. And then from there, the video transitions immediately into the channel's video intro, which only lasts three seconds, has this kind of goofy graphic and this funny banjo sound. And then once the tutorial actually begins, we see that the screen is actually loaded with content. So talk about media diversity. We can see Kagan. We can see live screenshot or screen capture of the Slack software itself. 
And then we can see down below that the keystrokes that he is using to do certain things in Slack. So from a certain perspective, we have a picture in a picture and then another picture in a picture. As a result, we have all of this media diversity. We're seeing what he's doing. We're hearing what he's doing while he's actually explaining to us what it is that he's doing. Further still, throughout the video, there are sound effects and this jumbo-sized text that's kind of superimposed on the lower part of the video. And of course, this reinforces certain messaging and offers even more media diversity. And he even takes that a step further by using memes that have pictures and text in a picture-in-picture -picture style. So all in all, this is a really interesting case study in very tight editing, which we'll talk more about next week, but also in media delivery in terms of the areas of pacing, intelligibility, quality, media diversity, and congruence. So I thought it would be fun to kind of look at that example to give you a little bit of inspiration and to help connect our reading to this real world example. All right, now in the last few minutes of the video, I wanna just give you a few production tips for filming your talking head videos this week. So production tip number one, it's really important to pay attention to speaking direction. Be deliberate in whether or not you're gonna talk straight on to the camera and be centered, or do you want to use more of an angle where you're talking off camera off to an angle? Also, please pay attention to your vertical spacing. As we saw in one of last week's videos, we want to have the top of our head almost to the top of the frame. So think of the two finger rule, that just two fingers worth of space above your head to the top of the frame. Relatedly, pay attention to the shot type. Now take a look at these three shots. We've got a medium close up, a medium shot, and a medium long shot. In all of these examples, the subject's head is near the top of the frame. But how much of the subject's body is included in the shot is varying significantly. Typically, it wouldn't make sense if you're sitting down to use the medium long shot. There's no reason you get kind of funny proportions and there's no reason to see the hands and the legs. So usually you would want to use kind of a medium shot where you can see the arms and the hands if someone's gesturing or you might even consider a medium close-up. Oftentimes what talking head videos will do is they'll be shot using a medium shot, but in editing, they will jump cut between medium and medium close-up to create some variation, some media diversity in terms of what people are seeing. Production tip number four is pay attention to camera angle. For talking head videos, you want your camera shooting straight ahead at eye level to the subject. You don't want to have the camera looking up like the picture on the left, and you don't want the camera looking down like the picture on the right. That camera should be at eye level, so keep that in mind. Production tip number five, of course, is pay attention to subject lighting. We've already talked about three-point lighting this semester. At a minimum, you should try to have a key and a fill. If you can do key, fill, and hair, that's even better, and soft, natural light is ideal. Production tip number six, subject framing. I've emphasized the rule of thirds a lot this semester. Think about where you're positioning your subject. You don't want them to be too far to the right or the left or up too high or down too low. Also, you'll want to pay attention to your background. Now, there's a couple of different approaches here, but in general, you don't want your background to be distracting. It shouldn't be messy. It shouldn't be crowded. The way most people do this is try to either use a neutral or abstract background, and that can just be a piece of cloth, for example. You might also use just a plain wall. That, with good lighting, works perfectly well. If you do want to include some props or some background objects, typically you will want them to be topic related. So you can see in this particular one, there's a screen there with some lights. And of course, that's taken from a video focused on how to shoot effective video. So the objects that are there are topically related. Finally, if you have a bit of a fancier camera, you might actually be able to blur out the background. And really, the only thing that's in focus is the talking head, the person themselves. 
So those are different ways of thinking about how to manipulate the background for your talking head video. Production tip eight, consider using a teleprompter. Several of you mentioned you're concerned about having to memorize your lines for the talking head video. There are free online teleprompter software that works right in the browser. And here's an example of one from imaginary.tech slash teleprompter. And it allows you to change all kinds of settings in terms of how big the text is, how quickly it scrolls, what colors it uses. And so feel free to check those out if you're interested. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week and I'll see you in Canvas.